Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Jack Tano Porkins, one of the original Star Wars memes and one of the most iconic figures that come out of Star Wars history. Portrayed as a slightly pudgy rebel pilot, Porkins never made it back home after the Battle of Yavin 4. And everything about his death points to his incompetence as a pilot. But for those of you who knew Jack Tano Porkins knows that, that is far from the truth. Just because a man takes up a bit more space in the cockpit doesn't mean he doesn't know how to fly the damn thing. But before we begin today's episode, a word from our sponsor. The fig leaf is widely used in classical Western culture to cover up things you might not want everyone seeing. The Fig Leaf app continues this tradition of privacy in the internet age. Online privacy is a choice, your choice, and that privacy cannot be overrated. The Fig Leaf app is a flexible tool that allows you to improve your online experience by allowing you to control what information you share and how anonymous you want to be. More than just a simple password manager, Fig Leaf is an all-in-one solution that can ensure total online privacy. Using the Zero Knowledge Principle, Figleaf will encrypt all of your activities on their servers and only access that information with your permission and private key. Figleaf is currently in beta for Windows 10, and if you want to learn more information about it, check the description below. Thank you for your patience, guys. Sponsors like Figleaf help our channel running and gives us the opportunity to talk about how badass individuals like Jack Tano Porkins really was. Anyway, let's start from the beginning. Jack Tano Porkins was originally from the planet of Bestine 4 in the Bestine system, located in the inner rim of the galaxy along the Duro space run. Bestine 4 was an aquacultural planet with most of its surface covered in oceans. Although survival was initially hard for colonists on the few rugged islands scattered across the planet's surface, Bestine 4 eventually developed a small but robust ship repair and building industry. This unfortunately caught the eye of the Empire after the rise of the New Order, and the Galactic Empire swooped in and started construction of their own naval shipyards across the planet's surface. As oftentimes happens, the Empire first took over local industries and businesses, and then eventually displaced the entire population, kicking them off the world. This also included Jack Tano Porkins and fellow rebel pilot Zev Sineska, whose call sign was Rogue 2 during the Battle of Hoth when his T-47 Snowspeeder was shot down. During his youth on Bestine, Porkins had spent many years hunting sink crabs. These were crustaceans that propelled themselves through the air with sacks of gas. It was during this time that Porkins became a very proficient pilot of the T-16 Skyhopper. Produced by Income, the T-16 Skyhopper was a simple single ion engine airspeeder with a pressurized cockpit. It was incredibly agile and oftentimes used on agricultural planets by bush pilots for covering long distances in a short time. It was also armed with rudimentary weapons that could be upgraded and oftentimes this was used by law enforcement on smaller backwater planets. Because the T-16's parent manufacturer was Incom, its flight controls and maneuverability were quite similar to Incom's larger starfighter, the T-65 X-Wing. Other rebel aces, including Biggs, Darklighter, and Luke Skywalker, were also very familiar with the T-16, which gave them an advantage when piloting the X-Wing. At the time of the Empire's arrival, Porkins had already established himself as a free trader, which means for some being a merchant, while for others that meant being a smuggler. Nonetheless, the seizure of his world and the displacement of his people greatly upset Porkins. The Alliance to Restore the Republic however saw an opportunity and approached the best thing people who were now living a nomadic lifestyle and trying to recruit them to fight against the Empire. Although most best thing refugees refused to join the Alliance, Porkins saw an opportunity to quickly strike back at the Empire and took it. Porkins' first assignment was the Tierfin Rebel Outpost, located in the Tierfin system in the expansion region, just a few jumps away from Rebel High Command on Yavin 4. The Tierfin base was home to the famous Tierfin Yellow Aces. Although considered a training squadron, the Tierfin Yellow Aces saw many famous pilots ascend their ranks, including the legendary Wes Jensen, Callsign Red 8, also known as Zaldeans, who had 20 confirmed kills, and Captain Donsmit Ray, whose helmet was found by a scavenger by the name of Ray on the planet of Jakku decades after the Galactic Civil War had ended. While the Tierfin Yellow Aces weren't considered full active duty and usually avoided full confrontation missions, they didn't engage the Galactic Empire on numerous occasions. Porkins, with his previous experience in the T-16, found it relatively easy to transition to the T-65 X-Wing and also the BTL Y-Wing Bomber. 
While Porkins was an all-around excellent pilot, he excelled at the ground attack roll and low altitude flying. In our own world, he would have been extremely comfortable in the cockpit of an A-10 Warthog. This again was because of his experience as a T-16 Skyhopper pilot. With just 40 hours of combat time underneath this belt, Porkins achieved 16 confirmed kills and reached the rank of Lieutenant, making him easily one of the most skilled pilots in the entire Rebellion. It was also during this time that Porkins would receive his Astromech R5-D8. The R5 series Astromechs were usually pretty low quality and suffered from numerous defects, including a very sullen demeanor and critical attitude. Now, During one mission, Porkins helped ambush an Imperial freighter. However, when the Imperial convoy arrived, it had a much larger escort than expected. One of the Yellow Aces, Kissick Dorn, panicked and tried to escape from the battlefield, concerned that the rebel pilot would alert the convoy of their presence. The commander of the squadron sent Porkins and Wes Jansen to bring Dorn back or shoot him. Unfortunately, Porkins and Jansen were not able to bring Dorn back and Wes Jansen shot him down. This would go on to be Wes Jensen's first kill in combat. Roughly around the same time in the Bestin system, which was Porkins' home system, a mutiny was carried out aboard the Imperial class frigate Rand Eclectic by Rebel pilots Biggs Darklighter and Derek Hobby Clivian. They had been planning to defect from the Empire for some time now, but after their ship had been involved with the Lark Massacre, the destruction of an unarmed civilian freighter, the two had decided they had had enough. By zero years before the Battle of Yavin, the Alliance had become aware of the Death Star and had received plans of the battle station thanks to the brave actions of a small rebel task force during the Battle of Scarif. Now, before the battle, the Tyrf and Yellow Aces had been promoted from a training squadron to a full active duty squadron. Red Squadron on Yavin 4 was facing a shortage in pilots and Wes Jansen was scheduled for a transfer to the Elite Squadron. But before the pilot could make it over there, he contracted Heskin Fever a non-fatal disease contracted from bacteria that thrived in vacuum. Jack Tano Porkins, however, was next in line and took his place. So Jack Tano Porkins actually flew at the Battle of Scarif as well as a part of Red Squadron with the callsign Red Six. He mostly flew in support and covered other ships in Radis' fleet. Porkins was one of the lucky survivors of the battle and made it back to Yavin 4 with the remaining pilots of Red Squadron. Although a bit brash, at times Porkins was well liked and fit in very well with the rest of the pilots. He also enjoyed hazing new recruits, that was kind of his thing. He also didn't take kindly to anyone who made fun of his weight, even though his nickname was Piggy. Just a few days later, the Empire's Death Star appeared in the Yavin system, marking the beginning of the Battle of Yavin. The Rebel Alliance was only able to field 31 ships, including 22 X-Wings, 8 Y-Wings, and the Millennium Falcon. The Death Star was the size of a small moon and armed to the teeth with enough turbo lasers for multiple Imperial Sector fleets. To say the battle was one-sided would be an understatement. Jectonel Porkins and Big Starklighter are ordered immediately by their commander to attack one of the Death Star's deflection towers in order to take down a portion of the shield. Porkins' low altitude flying abilities made him perfect for this role. But upon destroying the tower, Porkins misjudged his altitude and was caught in the debris from the explosion. This caused his controls and sensors to malfunction. Big Starklighter warned Porkins to withdraw and return to base, but Porkins felt like he was still in control of the ship. Unfortunately, he was wrong. His altitude had dipped way too low, as did his speed, and he became an easy target for one of the Death Star's turbo lasers. Most of Red Squadron and Gold Squadron were shot down at the Battle of Yavin. All of them, along with Porkins, would be memorialized by the Rebel Alliance. The Battle of Yavin would be the turning point of the war where the Rebel Alliance finally united and became a formidable opposition to the Empire. Jack Tano Porkins' sacrifice would not be forgotten, neither would his piloting skills. The Rebel Alliance would rename the flight maneuver he carried out against the Death Star deflection tower the Porkins Belly Run, and it would become a basic part of training for the Resistance almost 30 years later. When it comes to an individual like Jack Tano Porkins, we learn that we shouldn't judge an individual by the size of their flight suit, but by the size of the hole they make when they crash into a battle station. Although Porkins was well respected in universe, a lot of fans in our own world today don't even understand how great of a pilot he is and oftentimes make fun of him and make him into a meme. I think Porkins deserves a lot more respect. So please do spread the word. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on more awesome Star Wars content. Um, also, special thanks again to Fig Leaf. 
Uh, we have more information about the app in the description down below, so check that out. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.